spread those max lightnings away, uh, and I think that makes it substantially harder to justify at least leading it. Well, maybe we'll see it in the back, but let's go ahead and get things started in this matchup between Guillermo and Antonio. I'm so excited to see how these players are going to really play with their teams and pilot them. But Antonio brings out Corviknight and Arcanine as Guillermo kicks it off with Porygon 2 and there is Amoongus. So Amoongus, not really in a great spot going up against two Pokemon that are, have super effective attacks against it <laughs> potentially. Now, Corviknight and Arcanine aren't exactly, you know, super offensive most of the time, so there's a chance that Amoongus can even survive like a double up from the Corviknight and the uh, Arcanine. So I think Amoongus is in a really tricky spot right now. Looks like it's opting to go for the Spore. I think Trick Room here is very safe because, you know, uh, the Amoongus just kind of outspeeds everything on Antonio's end. So that makes a lot of sense, but Amoongus is just in a really tricky spot right now. Uh, you know, going for the Spore onto Corviknight covers any switches, but it also means that uh, if you have the Lumberry, you immediately burn it, and then you mm -hmm. set up Trick Room and you can set up the Spore this, uh, next turn. So first question I have is, you know, can Corviknight and Arcanine actually have enough offense to knock out Amoongus turn one, and do they go for it? Uh, looks like it's actually going to be a Corviknight switch out, though. Ooh, into Gastrodon. Very interesting choice, uh, but I, I think that's really good. If if that Corviknight did end up having something oh! like a Lumberry, but wait, what? What? The self Will O Wisp on turn what? one. That was so smart. I oh can't believe gosh. what I just saw. I cannot believe what we just saw. That is so clever and. You know, this is an open team sheet uh, tournament, right? So both players know what moves every Pokemon has. So Antonio recognizes, hey, Amoongus doesn't have a grass type attack, but it hits me for super effective damage. Let me just bring in Gastron, burn it. And so even if Trick Room goes up, the Gastron is in just no immediate threat of damage. That was just so, so smart. Now what Gastron can do is potentially just Dynamax and go for Max Quicks. I mean, one thing you have to be maybe a little bit wary of is a Tyranitar switch in because Max Quick could potentially activate that weakness policy. But as we've seen, Guillermo doesn't actually have that Tyranitar. So how do you actually deal with Gastron on now? Oh my gosh, that was just so smart. I, oh, holy cow. I'm I'm just I, like kind of blown away <laughs> still by what just happened, but yeah, Gastrodon's gonna be a huge threat to Guillermo's team. And even though Arcanine gets put to sleep, you stop the sleep onto the Gastrodon, and that's the biggest, biggest turn. And I feel like Antonio is in the driver's seat right now. Yeah, he absolutely is. You you know, self status is you don't see very often, but that was the perfect example of how it could be really good and. What's actually really tricky is that the Pre-Marina also doesn't even have Hyper Voice, right? So you can go for Water-type attacks Insula Arcanine. Normally, Pre-Marina has a pretty good matchup Insula Arcanine, but here forced instead to go for the Dynamax and Max Starfall into Gastrodon. But uh, Gastrodon, of course, now can go for a Dynamax and start going for those Max Quicks, get those special defense boosts. And with no super effective attack against the Gastrodon, this thing is going to be so difficult to knock out. So I think Guillermo going for pretty much the only play that he can by going for the Starfall onto it, right? You really, you, you can't Max Geyser there at all. You can't go for the Hydro Pump. But uh, Gastron here opting to go for the pretty safe Max Quick as well. And now the question is, can you actually knock out the Gastron through these special defense boosts in these three turns of Dynamax? Uh, I think it's going to be a really difficult ask of Guillermo's team, but uh, I'm I Antonio's Pokemon are just going to be so difficult to get through, especially with this special defense boost. You know that mm -hmm. Primarina is a special attacker, so being able to get those special defense boosts with Max Quake ends up mitigating so much of that offensive pressure. But I want to see where this ends up kind of being targeted, as we do see Sludge Bomb come through. Arcanine does take a little bit of damage there, but here is that safe Max Quake, the clean play into the Amoongus, and Amoongus still hangs on. Hangs on, yeah. It takes a lot of damage, and more importantly, the special defense boost goes off against uh, mm -hmm. onto that Gastrodon. So, you know, Free Marina, pretty strong Pokemon. It's got that Life Orb, as we've seen as well. There's a Max Starfall, and that is not very much oh, damage so at all. Little. And also, you set up the Misty terrain now, so Amoongus, you know, can't really spore for the next, you know, couple of turns. So, it's in a really awkward spot now where you can go for redirection, but you know, is that really that great? I think Amoongus probably wants to switch out the subsequent turn, you know, get that regenerator as well. But 
uh, once again, how do you deal with Gastron? Like, you look at what Pokemon Guillermo brought, it's, there are no physical attackers, right? So if Gastron just gets three max quick boosts off and gets a recover off as well, I think it's pretty much impossible to knock out other than maybe a critical hit Moonblast from the Primarina, or maybe just a critical hit max Starfall right now. No surprise to see Amoongus switch out because there's really nothing for it to do right now. I think Porygon, an excellent mm -hmm. switch in, but... It's still just how do you deal with this Gastrodon right now? I, I just don't see an answer other than hoping for a critical hit or stalling out the max and then getting a big boom blast on the turn after the max ends. Yeah, and, and now these max picks are going to be targeting down the Primarina, so even though it's not doing too much damage, it is chipping away at that health pool and again getting a special defense boost as we see yeah, another max Starfall come through, but look at how little damage it continues to do! It feels like the Primarina is taking the same amount of damage from the Life Orb, honestly. And <laughs> what's critical here is, yeah, it survives, uh, you know, another turn, has its berry as well. So, you know, even another double up, like a tri attack Max Starfall, I'm not sure, knocks out the Gastron. And if Gastron's able to get a recover off, it's just so difficult to be able to pull this off. So I think what Antonio wants to do is position himself so that he can get a recover off because, of course, this if he has recover, which, you know, most Gastrons uh, carry. If he doesn't, then the Gastron's a little bit more, I think, uh, bearable to deal with because you can just go for, you know, uh, a consistent attacks and it can't heal itself. But I think Arcanine here pivoting out doesn't surprise me very much because you want to put on offensive pressure. Rillaboom actually the perfect switch out here because, you know, just does so much damage into Primarina. Primarina's max is going to end after this next turn. So I think a great pivot out there. Uh, especially because Arcanine just provides no utility right now. Yeah, Arcanine is unfortunately not going to be able to do too, too much here as we do see this Gastron continue to chip away at this Primarina. Um, but yeah, uh, Rillaboom is going to be a big offensive threat against this <sighs> Primarina, but like, look at how little damage still from all of these special defense boosts that are coming through. Gastron able to hang on and oh my gosh, it's it's just so tricky. Yeah, and you know what's really tough is like, Garamal set up Trick Room in this game, but then it was Gastron yes. attacking first under Trick Room the entire time, right? So yes. Trick Room now ends, Max ends, and this is why the Rillaboom switching is so brilliant because now what you can go for is just say, go for a grass type attack into the Primarina with the Rillaboom. That should just be enough to pick up a knockout. Uh, and I don't even think a tri attack knocks out Gastron from this range. You might, you know, maybe just try to bank for it right now and get as much damage off as possible. It, you know, if it's actually a high damage roll, maybe it's enough to pick up a knockout. I'm just wary of it because of all those special defense boosts. But, you know, if Gastron gets a recover off here, I think the game is essentially over. You really need to knock out Gastron this turn. So, what's tricky here is, you know, I don't think you expect the Pre Marina to survive a grass type attack. So, uh, given that the Porygon outspeeds Gastron, I think it's just hope for a tri attack onto the Gastron to pick up the knockout. Looks like Guillermo's actually opting for the Trick Room instead, though, which could be a disaster if Gastron has recover and goes for it. Maybe Guillermo going for it, expecting Gastron not to have the recover. But let's see, it's Woodhammer coming out. That's a knockout out of Pre Marina. Gastron recovers here. I just don't see how you knock it out anymore. Yeah, it's it's so low, and you really want to be able <laughs> oh, to... Oh, there it is. Oh, it does go for the recover. It does have it, and... Now, what was a potential knockout range, even from that tri attack, is no more. That recover going to be able to get back so much health. And now, with the trick room back up, Gastrodon's going to be moving first again. Yeah, I just don't see how you deal with Gastrodon, right? Like, I, you needed to whittle away at it to a point where you could knock it out after uh, the Dynamax ended. But now it's at plus three special defense. Even critical hit attacks from Guillermo Zen don't knock out Gastron, right? You're stuck with an Amoongus with Sludge Bomb. That can't do anything against it. You have a Porygon with Tri-Attack, but even a critical hit Tri-Attack won't pick up the knockout. So you can hit everything around the Gastron right now, and maybe Timer is actually a potential win condition where you have multiple Pokemon, and you just keep knocking out Gastron's partners, but there's just no offense anymore from Guillermo Zen. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because I feel like the offense kind of comes through with either Dynamaxing the Porygon 2 or getting the Primarina done, like uh, like we saw Guillermo go for. And unfortunately, now that the Primarina is, is gone, there's not really a good way to counter the Gastrodon that's on the field. Exactly, and the Rillaboom critically has that knockoff as well. Obviously a very common move on Rillaboom, but so good in this matchup specifically because Guillermo's team is super, super bulky. 
you know, once again, one of the main things is, like, Yermo just doesn't have any physical attackers, and so Gastron getting to plus three special defense makes it nearly unkillable, right? You, at this point, need to go for maybe some critical hits, but even with crits, yeah, I just, like, I think your game plan now from Guillermo's end is you target around the Gastrodon, and play to a situation where it's, like, 2v1 or 3v1 against it, and, you know, because this game has been dragging on for a while, timer is a win condition. Of course, no reason to just forfeit yet immediately, because it's timer is a win condition, plus you can get more information in terms of speeds from the opposing side. Both players have access to team sheets in terms of moves and items, but, you know, figuring out what Pokemon's faster, I think, is always valuable as well. Absolutely. There's a lot of information to still be gleaned from playing out this match in full. And it's not over till it's over, like you mentioned. So I, I still think that there is a win condition on the board for Guillermo. And you're still trying to figure out exactly how your opponent is going to be playing through a lot of these crucial turns. Uh, I really like that we're, we're going to see a switch here from Guillermo. Just the Amoongus coming back for the Porygon 2. Um, maybe expecting that more of these attacks are going to be coming out from this Gastrodon into that slot. Um, as Rillaboom is also going to make a change as well. And here comes Arcanine. I think the Arcanine switching makes a lot of sense. You want Rillaboom to maybe potentially reset terrain, reset fake out later on. Arcanine pretty much does nothing against, you know, what the given Pokemon are, especially if you're expecting the Amoongus to switch out. So, yeah, I think, once again, for Guillermo, the only way you can maybe win this is if you knock out all of Gastron's partners, but there's just no offense whatsoever. So even though, like, you know, uh, Antonio's not doing very much damage. There's also just no damage coming out from Garamo's end. So I think you have to consistently double up on some, especially after Gastron gets that recover off, right? So what's also really critical on Antonio's end is you basically want to keep damaging the Arcanine slot. Porygon and Amoongus can keep healing back with Recover and Regenerator, respectively, but Arcanine cannot heal back. So if you just knock out the Arcanine, then Amoongus no longer can heal because there's no more Regenerator. So yeah, no surprise to see an Earth Power coming off and add so much Ooh, damage! Yeah, well, there's oh. the critical hit that comes through, and Arcanine uh, able to hang on and be able to consume its berry, but wow, that Earth Power was just the, the perfect move for Antonio to go for into that slot, as we do see the Tri-Attack come through, does a bit of damage, but Snarl now. <laughs> To make things even bulkier, I mean, this game has everything. You've got Intimidate, you've got Snarls, Arcanine finally is able to wake up. Looks like it's going to opt for that Heat Wave. Porygon is going to dodge it, but, uh, you know, any little bit of damage on the opposing Arcanine matters here. Critical Hit kind of just accelerating mm -hmm. the pace of this game, but once again, uh, you can, you know, switch Arcanine out maybe here into Amoongus, but what's really tricky is a Heat Wave will still be able to maybe do a lot of damage into it, especially if Tri-Tech doesn't knock out the opposing Arcanine, so... Once again, Gearbo has to try to maintain a Pokemon advantage while knocking out all of Gastrodon's partners. Just really difficult to do so, and I think on Antonio's end, you have really safe place of consistently going for Earth Powers into the Arcanine slot. Just click Recover every now and then to make sure that even a critical hit doesn't knock you out. Maintain your Gastrodon win condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Snarl now comes out from Antonio's side, which is going to drop the special attack of both of these Pokemon. Um, not going to be too big of an issue here as we do see Gastron continue to click Earth Power into that Arcanine slot and just chipping away at that damage as we see the Trick Room come back out. Trick Room comes back out, but once again, this is why that Spore onto Gastron turn one was just so brilliant. I mean, now the Amoongus can, you know, go for a, a Spore onto the Arcanine or even maybe Sludge Bomb it, you know, Sludge Bomb try attack it. Uh, looks like Guillermo is actually content just protecting it this turn to maybe bait out another Earth Power from Gastron, get some more burn damage. Uh, timer is, you know, running slightly low now, and once again, like, we were talking about Timer being a win condition for Guillermo, but I don't even see how that really exists anymore, just because there's just not enough damage to keep knocking out Gastron's partners. Yeah, there's, there's so many Pokemon still left for Antonio's side, and, and even still, because of the defensive game that's being played, it's, I think, very difficult for any knockouts to kind of happen for um, in Antonio. And, yeah, I, I'm just, like, still kind of reeling at the fact that this game, I feel like, was just decided by the side will that we saw turn one. All right, here it is. Spore onto the Arcanine this time around, but <laughs> once again, there's just no damage. Uh, you know, Earth Power is going to come out here. And once again, like from Guillermo's end, you know, there's no reason to give up. You can use this time also to come up with the game plan for the subsequent turn. And uh, once again, there is a slight win condition in Antonio maybe messing up. Uh, taking enough damage onto the Gastrodon to the point where you can go for a... Um, 
yeah, get a critical hit onto it, but I, you, yeah, once again, you can also use this time to kind of plan out your game plan for the next game, right? You Because mm -hmm. this is a really tricky matchup, honestly. The pre-marina isn't able to do any damage into the Arcanine because of the Gastron protection, but you also don't have anything to uh, go up against for the Gastron specifically because there's no super effective, say, Grass-type attack on the Amoongus. So uh, I think, like, these four Pokemon just weren't good enough to beat what Antonio brought, especially after that really, really smart play on turn one. So... You know, I think Corvidite Tyranitar absolutely has to be adjustment going into the next game. But once again, Guillermo at this point, just, you know, keep trying to get some damage off the Sludge Bombs and try attacks. But he's, his Pokemon are now running dangerously on HP. And as soon as you knock out Arcanine, you know, you limit the recovery from the Amoongus as well. And with Porygon not having the Evil Light as well, there's just so little ways to really heal yourself now uh, and be able to tank attacks well. Well, Amoongus going to go for a Protect, just continuing to play this very defensively and very, very slow. And that is actually going to be able to eat up a bit of damage here as we are going to see a double into the Amoongus just coming through from the heat wave of Antonio's Arcanine as uh, Arcanine just taking a little bit of chip on Guillermo's side. Yeah, and every bit of chip matters on this Arcanine because it can't heal, right? So as soon as you pick up the knockout onto it, it's pretty much uh, a lost cause. So I think like, yeah, I mean, Guillermo keeps going for these switches, but... <laughs> There's just no damage coming out at any given point. And with Arcanine being the one switch out, you know, trying to bait an Earth Power into that slot so that you can recover it the subsequent turn. Yeah, Antonio still has Rillaboom and Corviknight in the back, which put on a lot of offensive pressure as well. But he's just not switching out right now because no need to be careless. You don't want to switch in a Corviknight uh, into, uh, you know, really a Spore. Although it has a Lumberry, you know, pouring on pressures with Thunderbolt as well. So just wait for the free switch in. And uh, Antonio actually correctly goes for the Earth Power onto Amoongus. So finally knocks that out. Now with Arcanine being in the back, that has no way to heal. That's going to go down to Gastrodon. And this was basically a Gastrodon 4v1 game, it felt like. Yeah, Gastrodon's such a powerhouse in this match. And it, it reminds me a little bit of just, like, how important it is to to really have like great coverage on your team. Um, I mean, it's it's so difficult though, because like Gastrodon just like, isn't really a Pokemon that I feel like I've seen too much of in recent weeks. So yeah, how do you mm -hmm. really prepare for someone to bring a Gastrodon? I think that's a brilliant point to call out because this format is so Rillaboom heavy. You know, the majority of teams have Rillaboom. To even see a Gastron already is like, wow, like this was a really early metagame Pokemon. And it was so dominant here, right? I think Guillermo's team is kind of built around the fact that like, probably wasn't expecting to really see Gastron on at all. Yeah, all right, here we go. I, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> oh, just a little bit. There, there's a knockout. I, I, <laughs> both. Uh, I and I think oh, the skull coming through as well. There's just going to be uh, you know trade going through for both Arcanines here, and I what a what an interesting game at the end of it all. I don't think Porygon's going to be able to get the one v three. Yeah, you see the timer now coming in, and Antonio actually really having that timer win condition, but. Uh, at this point, but I mean, yeah, at this point, you can just keep damaging Porygon, especially with no Eviolite. Light. So we'll we'll see Antonio take this first game. But once again, you know, Guillermo playing it out because you can get more information on speeds, how the opposing Pokemon interact with each other, and you can use this time to create a game plan going into this next match, right? I mm -hmm. uh, might as well just extend it a little bit further to think of what you can do going into game two. And I think once again, you have to bring one of Corviknight or Tyranitar. These four Pokemon like, Gastron 4v1s, right? We were talking about Corviknight being a Pokemon that could potentially <laughs> yeah. sweep through an entire team and take these attacks. It ends up being Gastron in this set, so I think Guillermo definitely has to bring at least one physical attacker because the reality is that, like, there's just not enough damage, especially, I mean, that turn one play with the side will -O which is so, so smart. Uh, and I think it's tempting to just attack the Amoongus in that slot, too. So, you know, going one step above and just saying, okay, Gastron really is the win condition, especially if Guillermo doesn't bring the Tyranitar or Corviknight, and with neither of them in the back, uh, ends up being kind of a disaster for Guillermo. Yeah, it's such a such a problem because like I, I even when you take a look at Guillermo's team, like what really is going to be able to deal with the Gastrodon? Uh, you you kind of have to like you you can't really focus in down because of all of the defensive boost that it's able to get from those Max Quakes, and then you also have to really think about. What are the ways to, to shut it down? Especially now that you've seen the side will strategy come through from Antonio, you, you can't just spore it. Or it's a lot more it's difficult to spore it. Yeah, exactly. And you also have to be a lot more wary of just setting up Trick Room, right? Like, I think Yurimo's Trick Room has pretty much all worked against him in this match because the Amoongus 
Sure, was able to spore Gastron's partners, but none of those partners are actually really doing very much. Um, everything is basically... Yeah, like, everything is just so bulky in this game. Like, normally you, what you want to do is spore and then, like, pick up a knockout on that Pokemon, but there's just so little damage coming out right now that you can't really even pull that off. So, uh, with only 50 seconds left on timer, we're going to see this game end on timer, but I think Antonio was never really going to lose this anyway. <laughs> Paralysis comes out, oh. so, uh, you know... Shows that the Corviknight has the Lumberry. Of course, Guillermo knows that, but confirms for the viewers that it has the common Lumberry, uh, you know, that most Corviknights have. And, you know, one thing that's also valuable here is you're able to see the damage output, you know, see how much a Scald from a Gastron does against Porygon without Eviolite. Light. So, you know, yeah. just memorize these damage calculations going into this next game. But uh, with timer running down now on this turn, it is basically about to uh, be over. So, oh man, I mean, that was a, that was a 20 minute game one, right? But it felt like Antonio won this on the first minute, really, especially yeah. <laughs> once Guillermo revealed that he didn't have a Tyranitar or Corviknight. I just think there was almost nothing Guillermo could have done, honestly. I mean, he tried his best, and I think the one play that maybe he could have opted for was uh, try attack onto Gastrodon on the turn that the Porygon trick roomed. I think that was pretty much the only thing I can think of. If you get a critical hit there, at least you knock out the Gastrodon, or maybe a really high damage roll. I don't think he was KOing Gastrodon at that range, given that it had three special defense boosts, but I think that was really the only option at that point as soon as Gastron gets a recover off there's just no way to knock it out yeah it's so tough because Gastrodon like like you said is one of those Pokemon that can really 1v4 a team especially if you get it set up in the right way much like mm -hmm. what Corviknight is capable of doing so you know looking into game two Guillermo obviously had a lot of time to think about a game plan of how they're going to approach the second game and does that start with making some adjustments in what Pokemon get brought yeah, it's got to be Tyranitar or Corviknight. One of those two have to come out in this matchup, I think. Maybe even both, but you have to, I think, make that your Dynamax focus because that last game, Pre-Marina Dynamax, went for three max Starfalls, which also, you know, uh, hurts you a little bit because then you set up the Misty Terrain so then Amoongus can't spore. You know, was able to bring Gastron relatively low, but after those max quick boosts, there's not enough offense, and then Gastron just healed everything back. So, I mean, one approach you could go for is kind of similar to that last game, where you chip away at Gastron, and then you bring something that outspeeds the Gastron. For example, the Corviknight or the Tyranitar, max that, and then try to knock out Gastron with a really powerful attack off before it gets recovered. I think uh, the main thing in dealing with the Gastron win condition is basically making sure that you time out the speeds really importantly, so that Gastron's never in a position to just get a free recover off. So, if you go with Tyranitar, what's interesting is you could potentially switch in on a Max Quake, even get that Weakness Policy boost activated, and then maybe Dynamax Tyranitar in subsequent turns. Corviknight's also an interesting Max option, though, because, of course, it can go for just Max Airstreams, which do a fair amount of damage into the Gastron. And I think if you expect... Um, your opponent to not bring the Dracozolt, uh, because Dracozolt, I think, is actually the biggest threat to Corviknight. You look at what was brought in the last game, it was Gastron, it was Rillaboom. Arcanine has will o -Wisp, but, you know, Corviknights often have Lumberry, so it can eat up those burns, at least on the first turn. Uh, and if it's like a bulk-up Corviknight, for example, you can just bulk up, take a lot of, uh, get a lot of these boosts, and if Dracozolt isn't out in the game, then Corviknight, you know, could do the same thing like Gastron did in that last game, maybe 4v1. So, I'm looking at Corviknight and Tyranitar as the adjustments on Guillermo's end. Well, let's get into this game too, shall we? And see whether or not those adjustments come to light. I'm super excited to see how Guillermo is going to respond to Antonio's game plan as we see Arcanine and Corviknight, the same leads of game one versus Corviknight and Amoongus for Guillermo. So there's a Corviknight adjustment. I, you know, you're able to bounce back the Intimidate here, the, uh, which doesn't really provide that much value, but you know, Corviknight at least now is able to you know put on a little bit of offensive pressure, um, especially depending on kind of the moves that it looks like it has the bulk upset and it's like a Guillermo, you know, debating whether to just Dynamax and go for a max airstream, trying to get some speed boosts off because once again, if Antonio brought the exact same four Pokemon as the last game. Uh, if you're able to knock out the Arcanine and it's Gastrodon and Rillaboom in the back, then, you know, Bulk Up Corviknight maybe could be your late game win condition where you just get multiple Bulk Ups off. Once again, Amoongus is in a really tough spot because, you know, both of these Pokemon have super effective attacks against them. It looks like Guillermo's actually going to play a little bit more defensively, which I like, recognizing, hey, if I Dynamax this uh, Corviknight too early on and I don't get enough out of it, then once again, Antonio can just play to this win condition where he just, you know, outbulks me in the late game. But, you know, Porygon never really getting these special attack boosts off. It's just going to be a heat wave immediately. So so it's a lot of damage onto Amoongus right away. Yeah, it really is. And it would have been even more damage if that Corviknight had stayed in this game as well. But Antonio just kind of reads that the Spore is really not going to be going in their direction. And even if it is, uh, Antonio recognizes that the Corviknight late game is going to be very, very important. Let me just go for a bulk up now and start getting those boosts. 
Yeah, you know, with the Lumberry that we saw in the last game, very safe, you know, opportunity to go for as well. So, Corviknight now could potentially just go for, you know, some damage, uh, you know, go for uh, Brave Birds, Iron Heads. I mean, it depends on its moveset. Uh, I think in a prime position right now to start distributing damage. Arcanine here, I think, content to just stay in, stall out these couple of turns of sleep. Once again, putting the Pokemon to sleep is good, but you also have to, you know, do enough damage to it. And that's kind of what we saw in the last game. I mean, there was just never enough damage to happen once these Pokemon were put to sleep, especially with all the bulk from Antonio's end. So, I think... Corviknight in a really prime position. You know, last time around we saw Gastrodon come out. Uh, Corviknight's actually going to switch out here, which I'm kind of surprised about, just because it feels like it was in a really good offensive position, especially with the bulk up, but at least Rillaboom is able to take a potential spore into that slot, and so Antonio may be recognizing, I want to conserve that Lumberry for the late game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Just in case just in case that the spore does come through for Antonio. I, I feel like that is definitely something that Antonio just wants to kind of be cognizant of. And as we see the Trick Room come through, it's very interesting to see what Antonio's fourth Pokemon is. And if it's going to be anything like what we saw in that first game, then like Gastrodon might be in the back. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, Dracozole would be such an interesting mix-up, right? Because it actually does really well mm -hmm. into Corviknight, so if you were expecting the Corviknight adjustment, a Dracozole in the back would be huge. But yeah, I think Antonio there, you know, switching to get Rillaboom in for free, that's now pressures with Fake Out, it can't be put to sleep by the Amoongus, so it makes Amoongus relatively useless. I thought that was a great position for Corviknight just to get some damage off, but, you know, Antonio might have also been predicting Guillermo to switch out the Amoongus into something more offensive to pressure under Trick Room. So now Amoongus opting for the Spore to, you know, just eat up a potential Fake Out, and the Fake Out is going to go into that slot. So a Porygon gets a little bit of, you know, chip damage here with a Tri-Attack. Also has potential status conditions, of course, but by targeting Arcanine, no chance of status. And Arcanine mm -hmm. is going to take another turn of sleep. So really interesting position for both of these players to be in where Guillermo is just trying to kind of maneuver around some of these more offensive threats from Antonio. But now that the Rillaboom is on the field, that kind of makes things really tricky for Guillermo. Yeah, you know, he's got the Sludge Bomb and Tri-Attack, so you can keep you know, di dishing out damage, like do around 25-30% of damage every turn. The question is whether that's really enough, right? Because you're slowly stalling out your Trick Room turns, the Amoongus has still taken a fair amount of damage, and uh, as soon as Arcanine wakes up, can opt for another Heat Wave. So, you know, Slush Bomb able to chip away at Rillaboom a fair amount. Poison would have been big just to, you know, keep the timer rolling on it as another Tri-Attack comes out, and this is, you know, better damage output than we saw in the last game, but uh, once again, Porygon loses its Eviolite, means, which means it's just so much less bulkier. Arcanine is able to wake up, is going to go for the Heat Wave, and it double connects, so that's a lot of damage onto the Amoongus once again. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, the Amoongus is, is still going to be able to recover just a little bit of health because of the grassy terrain that Rillaboom has set, but I, I feel like Amoongus is, is really going to need to be able to connect um, some more status conditions here if Guillermo really wants to stay in this game, and I think it comes through with those spores. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're free to just maybe launch another spore into the Arcanine slot. If you think tri Attack's going to knock out, you can just, you know, go for an uh, attack onto that slot. And then, uh, as you see, uh, Moongus may be thinking about potentially targeting the Rillaboom instead. So, mm -hmm. you know, what's tricky here is that the Arcanine has the berry. So it's like, even if you Sludge Bomb the Arcanine, it's just going to activate the berry, most likely. And then, so the big question is, can tri Attack pick up the knockout? It looks very, very close, honestly. So, you know, opting not to Spore instead, because at this point, you really just need a knockout. And it's important to target the Arcanine from uh, on Guillermo's end, because if you get rid of the Arcanine, then that is at least one of the main things that can hit the opposing Corviknight for super effective damage, especially if Astrodon is that last Pokemon. So I, I'm really curious if Antonio has the Gastrodon or the uh, Dracozold in the back. Uh, but Sludge Bomb, great switch in there. His Corviknight is immune. Yeah. Yes, that is going to be a really good switch in. But let's see how much this tri attack does to Arcanine. Oh, oh it hangs on, but it gets frozen. <laughs> oh, a freeze there. We'll survive. We'll eat up its berry and we'll heal back a fair amount. Oh, but it just thaws out anyway. Oh, oh wow. Oh, able to get off another heat wave and it connects with both Pokemon. Amoongus gets knocked out. And we mentioned that Guillermo is going to have to find these knockouts, but Amoongus well, not really able to kind of do as much support as it kind of needed to. And we can see that Primarina is going to be the final Pokemon in the back. Is that going to be enough offensive pressure? Yeah, what's really tricky is there's no way you can bring the Primarina out right now because you have to respect the Gastron, right? If you bring Primarina out mm -hmm. right now, you can't Geyser, so you'd have to be basically fishing for a Max Starfall onto a potential Gastron switch out, which I think is really, really tough. One turn left of Trick Room here. 
Porygon doesn't have its Eevee Light anymore, and looks like Guillermo is finally going to push the Go button and Dynamax that Corviknight, start getting some damage off, get some speed boosts as well, meaning that you can then start outspeeding everything on the opposing end. So, what's interesting from Antonio's end right now is you could, you know, maybe still Dynamax the Gastron in the late game, but Dynamax and Corviknight is actually not a terrible idea here either, because mm -hmm. it might be just as enough to do enough damage to knock out the Porygon, even if not this turn, then certainly the next turn will be able to. Uh, Antonio's Arcanine, you know, Maybe wants to go for a fire type attack on Slick Corbinite, just get some chip damage, or maybe will o -Wisp to burn the Lumberry and then go for another will o -Wisp in case the Arcanine survives the turn. So, you know, Guillermo's essentially lost the Amoongus and didn't get very much out of it. Antonio still has one more Pokemon in the back as well. And we finally see some Dynamaxes after it looks like, felt like 10 turns in this battle. Yeah, it is going to be a Corviknight for Antonio's side, and it's going to be the battle of the birds. Uh, it's going to be super exciting to kind of see how both of these players decide to really use their Corviknights, because you have the op option to go for just max airstreams, um, which is just going to be able to boost the speed on both sides of the field. But I feel like critically for Guillermo, you have to get knockouts with this Corviknight. I absolutely agree. And the question is how, really, right? Because uh, it isn't going for bulk ups right now, so you're relegated to just a couple of max air streams. Now, max air streams are pretty powerful, but I think this is a great prote protect from Antonio's end, especially because uh, Corviknight maxed, right? So by targeting that slot, you're able to weather the storm of one turn of Dynamax on Corviknight. That's such a big deal. Thunderbolt actually does a very good amount into the opposing Corviknight, but Max Airstream from the opposing Corviknight just actually is able to knock out the Porygon. That's why the knockoff from Rillaboom is able to be you know, such a critical mm -hmm. attack there. Uh, you know, those Porygons want to normally stay on the field for a very long time, similar to what Gastrodon did in the last game and just keep healing back, but not able to do so anymore. No, not going to be able to do that at all, as uh, Arcanine Protecting ended up working out so well for Antonio, just being able to eat one of these turns of max from Guillermo's Corviknight, and now Guillermo's down to their last two Pokémon. Yeah, the Protect is so critical there, because obviously Rillaboom does not want to take a Max Airstream, and if Gastrodon's the last one, you know, Max Airstream will do a lot to it, so it's interesting Antonio recognizing, hey, my Corviknight's actually a pretty good Pokemon to go for a Dynamax as well. Uh, we saw Antonio's Corviknight Max first under Trick Room, so Guillermo's Corviknight should be faster now, so it can just opt for, you know, a Max Stream before it attacks, a Max Airstream before it attacks, but Arcanine also getting that Max Airstream boost should be the fastest Pokemon on the field, so uh, because you're probably expecting Arcanine to go down here, you know, it could go for uh, some disruption onto La Primarina, for example, a Snarl, uh, decrease that special attack, which makes mm -hmm. it all the more tougher for Guillermo to win. Uh, Antonio could also switch in into the Gastron if you're expecting, you know, the water-type attacks to come out right now, that Hydro Pump into Corviknight. But I think if Arcanine even gets a single Snarl off here uh, before it faints, that would be really, really critical because then Primarina's damage output is just significantly reduced. And so I think what Antonio wants to do right now is basically knock out the Primarina and then force like a 2v1 position against the opposing um, Corviknight. It looks like Snarl is going to go first, is going to connect on the Primarina. Doesn't really care about being bounced back here. More importantly, mm -hmm. now Primarina is doing so much less damage. Absolutely. Primarina is the big target for that Snarl as uh, Arcanine takes another Max Airstream. This time does get knocked out to it because it went for the Snarl instead of the Protect. Um, but now that even even though that Guillermo has a speed boost, Primarina did take that Snarl. So it's at negative one special attack. Oh, and it takes so much, so damage, much damage for the Max Airstream too. Yeah, that's obviously a 2 8 KO there. It's just... Such a big chunk. There's the Hydro Pump. No, oh, does a lot, but you know, no critical hit. Primarina takes more damage from the Life Orb as well, so it's basically on a timer that will faint relatively soon. So, you know, this game definitely a lot closer than that first one, where it felt like you know Antonio mm -hmm. pretty much locked up that first game very early on. This time around, Guillermo has Corviknight as a late game win condition because you know Antonio doesn't have that many great. Uh, super effective attacks into the like Corviknight. So, uh, Guillermo also having that faster Corviknight able to attack first, I think, is really critical. So, last turn now, and uh, I mean, the thing is that the Primarina is in immediate danger of getting knocked out, right? So, uh, because it's slower as well, I think right now, Corviknight on Antonio's end content to just launch a max airstream into the Primarina. Gastrodon might be scared of a max airstream going into that slot, so it might choose to protect here. Uh, otherwise, you could also just go for maybe a Scald onto the Corviknight, start fishing for those burns, uh, get rid of the Lumberry so that you can go for further Scalds because a burnt Corviknight will have a lot tougher time winning this game. For sure. As we do see, the, the Max Airstream comes through into Antonio's Corviknight, <laughs> but look at how little damage that does. So Antonio's Corviknight going to be able to fire off yet another attack here as we do see that the Protect comes through from the Primarina, but there was no Protect 
from the Gastrodon. So uh, Primarina uh, able to get a little bit of damage through the Protect, but let's see what this Gastrodon does. Yeah, presumably it would be a Scald into Corviknight. I think just start getting some damage off into it. Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. like it is Scald. And, there it is. You know, if you get a burn at any point, you get rid of that Lumberry. And Scalds actually do a fair amount too, right? Corviknight's special defense isn't really that incredible. So I think because of that Protect last turn, Antonio's in a really good spot. What you have to do now is just knock out Free Marina. You're going to outspeed with the Corviknight, so Guillermo maybe recognizes that. Looks like he is going for the Iron Head, trying to flinch the Corviknight. So if Corviknight flinches here, maybe there's a shot. If you get the flinch onto that, the Corviknight mm -hmm. can knock out the Free Marina. So, let's see. Oh, Iron Head comes oh. through. Well, it's is not there super a flinch? effective. Oh, but... the flinch oh, it is a flinch! <gasps> oh my goodness. And the special attack drop onto the gas wow, and the pre on it has one HP as oh, well! Oh, oh my, oh my gosh. goodness! What is this turn? I think Antonio there maybe could have considered doubling up into the pre-marina just to cover for the flinch option because now what's actually really tricky is your Gastron's at minus one special attack. You don't want to switch out the core of Knight, so you'll probably just let Guillermo knock you out. Uh, because you can just, air, uh, yeah, go for a Brave Bird into the opposing Corviknight. That covers, covers Rillaboom as well. So, I mean, if Pre Marina gets like a high damage roll into the Gastron or crits it with the Moonblast, that might just be the game for Guillermo. So, critical flinch last turn. Let's see, is Moonblast able to do enough? That last one did just under 50%. Oh, it's it so does. close! Oh. He's on! Yeah, he's on! <laughs> Pre Marina gets knocked out to the recoil damage from the life orb and critically gastrodon gets a chance to consume its berry which will keep oh it just goodness. a little bit safer scald comes through corvanite oh, takes so much damage from that from the crit holy cow oh and that's actually gonna seal up the game i was thinking maybe corvanite could pull off the 2v1 against rillaboom and gastron it would still be tough right because uh, even if you don't get the crit there then you can fake out a uh, scald the next turn and then rillaboom can knock off so then the question is whether Gastron actually activates that Lumberry on Corviknight uh, at any given point, because if so, knockoff does less damage. But with that critical hit, that game will be sealed up. I mean, Guillermo needed a lot to go right in his favor, mainly that flinch onto the mm -hmm. opposing Corviknight. One way Antonio could have mitigated that was doubling up into the pre-marina slot. He was probably thinking the life orb damage would pick up the knockout anyway, but... Oh man, that endgame ended up being so close. I mean, we saw a flinch, we saw uh, a special attack drop.